I look at my role as an artist as, as really someone who addresses important social issues. And in today's uh, world, I think all eyes are on environmental concerns. All of us are concerned about what's going to happen to our environment and our ecosystem. The first time I ever painted a mangrove plant, a mangrove fruit, was when the governor commissioned me to create a piece for Hispanic Heritage Month and I had Ponce de Leon landing on a Florida seashore. And I just imagined it being on Bear Cut, you know, being the place where I walked as a kid. And what's on Bear Cut? Clearly mangroves. From that came a series of paintings that dealt specifically with mangroves, where I would look at the beauty of mangroves, where I would depict them, not as something general that you would drive by or, or sail by, but it's something that you could contemplate. And that's what these mangrove paintings were. I was invited by Hands on Miami to create some sort of public art intervention in our highways. And I thought of using mangroves as the perfect iconic representation of Miami and added an extra sort of conceptual layer that it's not just painting mangroves, but metaphorically reforesting what was once a mangrove forest. So literally 800 volunteers came out and painted what was there before, sort of representationally captured the essence of a mangrove forest. Reclamation's a play on words. Well, reclamation to me is really uh, what happens to beaches, right? In order to reclaim beaches for human beings, we dredge sand from the deep and bring it to a shoreline and thereby reclaiming the beach. And I just thought it interesting for mangroves to do their own reclamation for them to reclaim the coastline that was once there. The project itself would, in my mind, be superior by having more people engage, having more people take ownership of intervening. So it's not one artist's intervention, it's an entire community's intervention. The experience of walking through a forest of mangrove roots tangled all one upon the other, literally using all your limbs to cross through this forest. The sweat, the energy, the scratches, the experience of being completely immersed in the wild, blocks away from an asphalt road, is dramatic. And for many, if not most of the volunteers that participated, this was the first. It was the first time that they could be so immersed in the natural beauty of their community. Okay, just so you know, you're going to walk into the store. Before you walk into the store, walk in with this in your hand like that. You parked at the Lincoln Theater? Yes, no, I parked right here. So, so you have two suction cups, one like this, one like this. Even if we wanted to, we couldn't have one of these seedlings take root on the base side of this island. Okay. Thank you. The volunteers basically took responsibility for taking these seedlings and knocking on strangers' doors and saying, are you willing to hang this in your storefront? And forcing a dialogue in an unconventional way. The art lived in that interaction. Mango seedlings inside clear water-filled cups was my way of trying to show people 
that the only way that these little guys could exist on South Beach was in this artificial, constrained environment. That what looked like these exotic life forms, because most people didn't even know what these things were, these aliens, these foreigners, was the most natural thing on that very island. What they were staring at and saying, my God, this is weird, was the most natural thing for South Beach. There has to be a better balance between man and nature, that there has to be a better balance between development and the environment, that we can't just relegate mangrove seedlings to plastic cups and have neon and concrete take over the rest of the beach. Planting of the seedlings to me is the ultimate public art project. What a great accomplishment for these volunteers to create a wonderful piece of public art. And the public place that best defines Miami is its natural coastline. This is Bear Cut Preserve, and that's why we wanted to come in here so you could really visualize where we're going. And as you can see, gloves for what? Really? Really? Tuck it in there real nicely, and then you just use your hands. Ta da! You're good. <laughs> My goal for creating this mangrove forest is to help bring life back into Biscayne Bay and to ensure that the little life we have there doesn't continue to get paved over. In the future, we'd like for people to be able to walk up and down South Beach and happen upon a mangrove forest. I don't want you to have to go to the Everglades to, to a nature preserve to experience nature. Nature should be something that we coexist with. Nature should be something that we literally live next to and are a part of, not apart from. And that's what this whole reclamation project is about. This one's kind of tilted, Ms. Schroeder. That's all right. We're in a community where we want to make sure that years from now, we do have something to look at and say, wow, we're in a natural tropical paradise, we're in a beautiful place. <laughs>